Hello everyone on the internet, it's John again, and I'm going to be once again doing a review of this bowl of ramen in front of me. And today's video about ramen is going to be the first in a line of five, and these videos are going to entail a certain kind of ramen that's only available in Japan, and it's only available at 7-Eleven in Japan. So 7-Eleven has this series of premium ramens. Some of them say premium, some of them say premium gold, but they're all in the same series. It's a set of five bowls of instant ramen. Each one of the five are a collaboration between 7-Eleven, uh, I think Nissen brand, which makes instant ramen, and each one is also associated with a specific ramen restaurant a ramen shop in Japan. The first one I'm going to do today, this is the Santuka uh, restaurant. So if you were in Japan, you could find the restaurant Santuka. But also, um, in the United States, actually, there are some Santuka ramen shops. It became so popular that it boomed out of Japan. There's even one, in, I'm in Chicago, there's one in Arlington Heights. I've never been to it, um, but I, we'll see after eating this if I am interested in going there. Anyway, I got this set of five on a website called Japan Tellier. That's spelled Japan like you spell Japan, and then T E L I E R. And the this website basically does all types of candies and snacks and ramens that you can only find in Japan and they will ship them anywhere uh, in the world within reason and something special that they do now I don't I know you can get this also like on Amazon and eBay one thing special that Japan Tellier does is anytime you order something they have their own printed versions where they tell you everything in English so if you're like me you don't read or speak Japanese you'll still be able to make everything with relative ease. I assume you could probably look this stuff up online as well but it's so much easier when it comes with it. So anyway I have this partially made I'll finish the rest of it and basically you open the package you it has four packets in here one pack actually has a freeze-dried piece of meat in it. I'm interested to see how that works out. This packet has some like vegetables in it. It also had this, which is a Japanese plum, which is one of the last things you put on there. And then you have a powdered soup base and a liquid soup base. Take all those out, you add only the, the vegetable and the meat back to it. You pour your hot water over the top of that let it wait for five minutes which I have done here I'm going to remove the top of the lid for ease of eating there is what the top of the ramen looks like right off. Now before I add I'll show you a few things there's a if I can get it a little piece of Naruto and this big chunk of meat that came in there. There's like bamboo shoots and mushrooms, I think, as well. So after, it does tell you to break up the break up the noodles. And then you add your two soup mixes. I cut this open here a little bit just to make it easier for myself. Now this is supposed to be a shio tonkatsu or a white pork broth which is their signature dish at their restaurant. I look up the one that's in Arlington Heights, the one that's near me, and it's not like a full-on restaurant. What it is, it's like inside look how creamy that is. It's like a it's like a little mall type kiosk almost which is really authentic to what ramen shops typically are they're not big restaurants in fact the I read up on the uh, 
the website for this place and the original ramen shop the, the, the first one they opened in Japan it can't well even if I did remember the name of the, the city in Japan I probably couldn't pronounce it they only had nine stools total so if you were waiting there you'd only you'd have to wait for the one of those nine stools to open it's because they also don't really in Japan have like to-go ramen it's really not a to-go kind of food because the noodles are going to get soggy and it just won't be that good. And they only had one flavor. Um, and it was similar to this, not exactly this one. But this became like their signature dish. The Shio Tankatsu, or white pork broth. Um, I'm going to give you a little top view of this. There you go. The Naruto, the meat back there. Let's give this a taste. Let me start off by eating the Naruto. Oh, I forgot to put the finishing touch on there. So this is a Japanese plum. And it is just a really tiny plum. I'll put it right there on the top. I don't know if that's something that's supposed to soak in there, or you're supposed to eat it last, or what. But this is just how it's served in their restaurant. Let's give that meat a taste. I'm really interested to see this piece of pork that was freeze-dried in Japan at some point, shipped all the way over here. I reconstituted it with some hot water. Let's see what it tastes like. It's almost taken on like a fishy quality. Like the meat is a little bit flaky. There's also a porky taste to it. I'm really impressed actually. The texture is not as tender as like fresh uh, pork. But the flavor is there. And it's overall just a nice addition. Let's go ahead and taste some noodles. Mm. The broth is very rich. Compared to instant noodle broth I'm talking about. On the website, this is actually described as a light broth. And I suppose if you went to like a, a ramen shop, this would be a lighter. The shio typically means a... I think shio translates to the salt, if I'm not mistaken. So usually it's like a, a clear broth. This one is like a shio tenkatsu, so... Tenkatsu is usually it has like that creamier uh, cloudiness to it. Mmm. That vegetable almost has like a crunch to it. Super, super tasty. Let's set aside a little piece of that for later. Mm. Especially for like being in a to go bowl. I can see how this would be a very premium 
to go instant ramen. It has everything you need in it. It's got the meat, it's got the vegetables. It's got a creamy pork broth. Nice long noodles. I'm gonna try, I'm trying to find the uh, plum. It kind of sank in here. Let me drink some of the broth too. Mm. Sesame, pork, Hold up a minute. So if you get a spoon, it'll be right back. I probably should have had my spoon already. I might have actually already eaten it. I know you don't want this video to just be minutes of me searching through soup for one little thing. So we're going to go ahead and end it there. This is actually very tasty and delicious. I'm looking forward to the other four because if day one, the first one, is this good, you can only move up. And two of them are from actually Michelin star rated restaurants. I'm saving those two for last. Well, guys, I got to the end of the bowl and I found it the Japanese plum. So, I'm going to just add this on at the end of the video as a bonus. Tell you what I think about this plum. I don't know if it has a seed in it, so I'm going to take a little bite. Yeah, there's a seed in it. It's really tart, but it's soaked up that salty broth. Mm. It's like a little weird, super sour, super salty kind of sensation. It's interesting. I've had a Japanese plum candy before. It was sour. So I knew to be expecting that it was tart. But when it adds that like super saltiness of the, the broth, it's just kind of strange, actually. I don't know if I like that or if you like that, but it's very interesting. It's just a little bit, so it's not like a, a ruiner of the thing. But other than that, this bowl of ramen is two thumbs up. But anyway, hope you like this video. Subscribe to the channel and give this video a thumbs up. Until next time.